I'm always moved in movies, most probably by when people are kind to each other or when people extend themselves beyond what is required of them. I guess that's what heroism is. So why does Seppala take his 12-year-old dog that he loves and take this very dangerous journey? He sees a need. He sees the thing that he loves to do can maybe help other people. And it's really that simple, even though it may put him in danger and put the thing he loves in danger. So that's a very rich mix. The sepulchre that you see at the very beginning, well, it cuts between flashbacks and, and, and the serum run. So there's, there's always a tension uh, because the serum run was very treacherous because of weather, because it was such an, an endurance, it was such a miraculous thing for them to travel as far as they did. Um, and that's intercut with flashbacks flashbacks of when Togo was smaller and things were very different. And also, Leonard Seppala was a very different person because we see him really, he's very pragmatic, stoic. He, he likes the dogs very much. He takes care of them, but he's very connected to function. And only about, he only thinks about efficiency and what works, basically. And you see him take this dog that he basically he has no use for, and he becomes very important to him. And in fact, um, he changes his mind about uh, this dog, and, and that's the development of that relationship. We got really lucky with Jillian Nicholson. She's, she's really great, um, and I love playing the scenes with her. Uh, Constance, on one hand, is the classic kind of frontier wife, but she also She's as strong as Seppala, if not stronger, because she understands the things he understands, but also has a certain sensitivity that he doesn't quite have in his work. He's very pragmatic, so in some ways, at the beginning, you see him quite, quite closed, quite laconic, and she's much more perceptive toward the animals. For example, she anticipates that Togo should not be written off so quickly. And it's really, ultimately, her that made uh, uh, Seppala, in our story, be patient with Togo and allowed him to, um, to flower. There's a lot of sequences, action sequences, where I'm mushing, I'm driving this dog sled. And both in winter and in summertime, because Seppala trained his dogs off-season, which nobody else did. He built a cart so they could pull, so they could stay in good shape, basically. So I had to learn those things. I had to learn how to, uh, of course, deal with the dogs, hook them up, direct them, get a sense for them, know what they responded to, know when they needed water, uh, learn about their uh, body temperature, learn when they were well, learn when they had to rest, those sorts of things. Togo was old, yes. He was already, I think they were probably already thinking of um, slowing down his responsibility. Um, but Seppala felt like he couldn't do it with any other dog. No other dog had the strength and intelligence and courage to, to, do, that, to the, do that run with him. So it was a really hard decision to, to make. But he thought if he didn't use Togo, neither of them were coming back. Erickson Kaur, he's so incredible. He's so upbeat, optimistic, passionate, sensitive. He's got a huge experience with um, being outdoors, being in extreme weather. Um, he was a DP, he's got an incredible eye, the way he sees things, the way he lights things. Um, while also he had a wolf for over 10 years, so he's deeply connected to the story of, of man and dog. And I just think I'm so grateful to him for giving me the opportunity to be a part of this story, and um, I think he's really special. It's a huge adventure. I mean, traveling hundreds and hundreds of miles in bitter cold through frozen waterways and tundra and forest and 
you know, man versus the elements and dog. It's it's an incredibly adventurous story and and really scary. And when I was reading it, I was on the edge of my seat, you know, not knowing what's what's coming next and just hoping that it will all work out. And miraculously, it does. In 1925, dog sledding was transportation, it was uh, delivery for mail and post, it was uh, communication from getting, you know, communication from one place to another. Um, the closest train station to where our story takes place, I think, was like 700 miles away. Um, so you could have some, some of these things happening via the sea if it wasn't frozen, which it was six months out of the year. So people relied very heavily on, on the dog sleds. The story of, of Seppala and, and Togo are, are extremely unlikely coupling. And uh, through all this remarkable resistance of wanting to um, work together, it just can't, they can't stay away from each other. And it's, um, when put to the test, as we'll see in the, at the height of the, of the picture, um, they save each other's lives. And it's, it's, um, it's a wonderful story. Togo is a wonderful, it's a, he's a wonderful uh, tale of a, of a small, dog who was thought to be uh, incapable of being a working dog, would not be strong enough, would not be able to survive under those kinds of conditions. And he was, Seppala tried to get rid of him two or three times, and each time the dog found a way back to the human being whom he felt such a connection to and wanted to prove himself to. Um, and it's it's quite a quite a tale. The phys physical demands for 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 Willem Dafoe are enormous. Um, but I, I asked him just a few moments ago. You know, you've been on the sled uh, quite regularly. How are you enjoying it? He's a big smile and says, "I loves it." When he's able to stay on, you know, it's a ch it's a challenge. And um, but he loves it. He was one of the uh, original founders of Gnome, back in the day of the Gold Rush and pre-Gold Rush and the boom of the Gold Rush. So he's kind of one of the, he's probably the head honcho of the town. Well, the, the story starts that there's a very bad storm coming in. Um, and the lead character, played by Willem Dafoe, uh, Seppala, who is a musher, um, He's returning home after uh, being out on a run with the, with the dogs and he is informed, informed when he arrives in town that there has been an outbreak of diphtheria in the children and they're desperately in need of a serum, an anti, uh, um, antitoxin or the, if they don't get it, um, the, all the, the town's children may die. Willem's an amazing actor, I've always been um, I had a huge amount of admiration for him, and it's just it's great to work with him. He's very incredibly professional, and uh, he's a very physical actor as well. Um, we're all uh, in awe of him, running around in the snow and flying around with the dogs. Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's, he's some guy. Yeah, Ericsson's amazing. He's a lovely guy, uh, and he knows what he wants. He's got a great vision, and he's also incredibly inventive and very open to ideas, uh, which is which is perfect for this kind of shoot because you know a lot of things can things don't always go according to plan, but he's completely on top of it, and he's also got a great sense of humour, which really helps. Hey there, it's Lisa here with today's bonus clip. Now there are a lot of family movies with animals as the protagonist, but not just any animal with man's best friend, dogs. Some of the best family movies with dogs are Homeward Bound, Benji, Air Bud, Beverly Hills Chihuahua, and A Dog's Way Home. What's your favorite dog movie? Let me know below. And remember, click down here to subscribe or on the side for more great content.